If you've been watching my videos up to now, you'll know I've been building a replacement for the defunct single eight movie cartridge format. I left you last time with a cartridge that fit the camera, but had completely the wrong reels. Since then, I've produced a cartridge with new reels, better light tightness around the reels, and a cartridge which I considered I could fill, fill with film. I filled at least one cartridge with film, but found some problems and I've developed several new iterations of the design and I'm now almost at the point where I think I can take it and get it filled with some brand new film and try and shoot some film. Hello, my name is Jenny List and welcome to another exciting instalment of What's on Jenny's Bench. This is the cartridge that I refer to as Viable Prototype 1. It has a new real design with no flanges and a groove to feed the film into. It has a lip round the edge of the opening for the shaft and a corresponding circular groove to let go in. That's for light tightness. It has a little post there with a little um, pulley on it that goes round. The film goes through the opening in the cartridge, past that guide for light tightness, and round the pulley, and then onto the reel. I considered this ready to go. It fit the camera. It's got good light tightness shields all the way around it. Everywhere has two sets of plastic between it and the light. So I considered it ready to try filling one of these with film and putting it in a camera. I built this jig. This was simply from pieces, of offcuts of laser ply from my hacker space, cut with a bandsaw and stuck together with a double-sided tape. It's surprisingly robust for what it is. Um, I obviously sized it to fit a Super 8 cartridge here um, and my single 8 cartridge here. Now, because of the orientation of the film, with the uh, sprocket holes at the bottom, uh, the Super 8 cartridge has to be upside down, and the Single 8 cartridge is raised up a little to be at the same level as the film. I've got a whole video segment of my explaining this and doing this. I had to do it in the actually in the toilet at my hacker space because it's the only place I've got that I can make completely dark. Okay. <clears throat> I've set up this portable workbench and I've made this jig. Um, and the jig holds a an old um, uh, Super 8 cartridge. Um, it's probably about half shot. And this is my um, homemade single eight uh, shell. The idea is that the Super 8 film comes out of this side of the cartridge. I had to sit down and work that out carefully. Um, if you can see a slight colour difference, I've reeled out just one frame's worth. That's sort of pink and that's brown. This has been very well exposed to light over a long time, whereas that is fresh. So the fresh Super 8 film comes out of that side. The idea is I pull it out, cut off the end, gently pull it out and then thread it onto around this pulley here and then onto this pulley here and then the idea is I should be able to just gently pull it out there with my finger and wind it gently and wind as much as I can on and see if it works if it doesn't well I tried so without further ado let's turn off the light so at the end of a lot of fiddling around in the dark, I've got what I think is a workable um, single eight cartridge, probably with about a minute of wildly out of date uh, Super 8 uh, stock in it. The result was this viable prototype one with some film in it. This film is truly ancient Agva film from the 1970s. Uh, probably shoot something on it it's being kept uh, in the dark but uh, I don't think you would get brilliant results from it this is really as a test 
I put this in the camera and always expecting it to go and of course it didn't work. Now the reason it didn't work was uh, friction. Uh, when you put it in the camera this little uh, reel here as the cartridge is pushed against the film gate in the camera obviously the reel moves relative to the um, relative to the inside of the camera and what happens is the inside of that groove there pushes up against the the lip for light tightness so this moves across and it can't move anymore so I get huge friction and it doesn't work I had to redesign my cartridge I came up with uh, now which one is this this is viable prototype 2 no viable prototype 2 still has the small uh, reels first of all I realized I had been holding it together with screw holes and I realized after making this that I could hold it very well together with sticky paper. So I got rid of the screw holes. This was Viable Prototype 2. Viable Prototype 3 is my current state of the art. What I've done is I've made, unfortunately, a bigger reel because you have to, to accommodate the space. If you uh, look at the different sizes, the one on the right is about a millimeter bigger, but I've got a much bigger groove. So this has got much more play, much more movement. So I'm hoping that when it goes in the camera, it will just be able to turn. And there won't be any friction issues. I've also flipped the cartridge upside down. If I go back to prototype one, what have I done with prototype one? Can you prototype one? Yeah, this is viable prototype one. Uh, if I go back to viable prototype one, I have a problem. Oh, come on. I put my little pulleys in there. The problem I have is this is the outside of the cartridge and this is the corresponding inner lip for light tightness. And I found when I did my filling of this cartridge that the film had to go through past the pulley and then round onto the reel. And though there is plenty of space for both the film and the lip, in practice, Reassembling this cartridge was very difficult indeed because of course the film isn't tight on the pulley and so if I put those reels back in there when I was doing this step where I had to push the upper lip into the lower case getting it past the film was very difficult and took a lot of fiddling in the dark so what I did was this is viable prototype three yes viable prototype three it changes completely it's the inner lip is the one on the body of the cartridge that you fill up and the lid has the outer lip uh, thus when you put a piece of film through here around this pulley it, there's nothing else has to slip in along with it so this is in effect my current state of the art in cartridges. I was actually helped after prototype two, um, along came this. This is a beautiful little camera. It's a uh, uh, Fujika P2. Now, sadly, this one's missing its battery cover. Um, it fully works and everything. Um, it's missing its battery cover, so I've got two 3D prints and cut up a, uh, a battery cover for it because it's. I, I want this camera to, to, to live. But the really cool thing about it this is a courtesy of my friend Dave. It came with a genuine Fuji single eight cartridge. I put from Dave on it because it may have some of his family's holiday snaps from the late 70s. It's interesting when you have spent a lot of time replicating something using just pictures and the camera itself to see how well you did and i think i have only managed to make one slight foul up this opening is a bit too narrow and i've also found this because along the way i picked up a yashica single eight camera 
In fact, this one also had a film in it. I got two films within about two days. Um, I picked up a Yashica camera and it has a slightly wider area around the film gate than the Fuji ones I've been testing it with. So if I pick up my cartridge, my cartridge doesn't quite fit the Yashica. So viable prototype four will probably, if I just put the Yashica down somewhere, there we go. Viable prototype, prototype four will probably make this gap about a millimeter wider. But to have gone all this way without one of these as a prototype and to have uh, created a cartridge that has almost exactly the same dimensions except in one place just from measuring cameras i'm i'm actually quite chuffed with my cad skills i didn't do too badly there but anyway finally i get they're like buses aren't they you uh, wait a very long time and then two of them turn up at once but finally i get to look at a real single eight cartridge there's another obvious difference between uh my cartridges and the real cartridge but I can come to that at the moment my uh, spindle hole goes all the way through the real cartridges have a much smaller top hole with a place it's like a flat blade screwdriver bit because you can rewind the original cartridges that's simply a case of redesigning this this reel and I, I will do that but anyway that's the state of play. I think I'm pretty close to having something that I can fill with film and actually shoot with. I'm going to take it to the Super 8 lab in Den Haag in the Netherlands. I'm going to jump on a train at some point. Uh, it's worth, worth, totally worth the journey to get this right. And um, there's a guy there, Frank Brownsma, who has provided me with some very useful advice and support on this one um obviously uh i'm revitalizing a whole film format for an entire community of filmmakers so i i sense there may be, be a little bit of interest coming in this and i want to take my best shot to frank so that he can hold it in his hands and we will try to put some decent film in it and see what it does uh that will be my next step i'm not sure quite how soon that will be but uh watch this space and uh yeah thank you for following me on this path it's been a lot of fun uh building a film cartridge that hasn't been built in over 15 years thanks very much i don't have a sponsor for my videos but as before i'd like to take this moment to talk about something else i'm involved with away from my career writing about tech I am a board member of a small non-profit called Trans Rescue. We get trans people like me out of dodgy and dangerous places around the world. I'd like you to go to our website, read our blog and see what we're up to. And if you can, help us in our work. Thanks very much and thank you for watching this video.